Hi there. Now, inverse hyperbolic functions such as this one, y equals the inverse sine of x, can be expressed in terms of natural logarithms. And in this series of videos, I'll take you through some of the common ones. In this one, y equals the inverse sine of x. So to start with then, if we rearrange this, we've therefore got that x would be equal to the sine of y. And taking the definition of sine of any value, we've therefore got that x would be equal to e to the power y minus e to the power minus y, and this will all be divided by 2. And then if I multiply through by 2, we therefore have that 2x equals e to the power y minus e to the power minus y. Well, now remember that e to the power minus y is 1 over e to the y. So I'm going to multiply both sides now by e to the y. So therefore we get 2x times e to the power y. Then you've got e to the power y times another e to the power y, which is e to the power 2y, but I'm going to write it as e to the power y all squared. And then if we multiply 1 over e to the y with e to the y, we just end up with minus 1. Now we've got a quadratic here in e to the y. So if I rearrange that, let's say we subtract 2x e to the y from each side, we are left with e to the y all squared minus the 2x e to the power y and then minus the 1 and that will equal 0. So with this quadratic equation, if we use the quadratic formula, then we would have e to the power y equals a is 1, b would be the minus 2x, and c would be the minus 1. So using that quadratic formula, we've got minus b then, which is going to be 2x, plus or minus the square root then of all of b squared, which is going to be minus 2x all squared, okay, minus 4 times a, which was 1, times c, which was minus 1, and all of this is divided by 2a, so that would be just 2 times 1. I'll put the 1 in just to show that I've used the formula. Tidying this up gives us 2x here then, and then we've got plus or minus the square root of, well, got 4x squared, and then plus another 4. And that's all divided then by 2. Now you could factorise inside the square root there and get 2x plus or minus the square root then of 4. And then we've got bracket x squared plus 1. And all of this then is divided by 2. Now in the square root then, I can think of this as the square root of 4, which is 2, multiplied by root of x squared plus 1. So in fact, the 2 cancels through quite nicely. 2 will go into that 2 there. And the root of 4 is 2, so we can say it cancels into this one here. So what we're left with then is that e to the power y must be equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, we've got this plus or minus option here, and e to the power y must always be a positive quantity. So, if I compare x with the root of x squared plus 1, we can see that if we look at the graph here, the root of y equals x squared plus 1 is always greater than y equals x. So we know that since the root of x squared plus 1 is greater than x, it must mean that we have to take the positive option. The negative option here would be invalid. 
we're just going to get e to the power y being a negative value otherwise and that's not defined. So we need to take the positive option here. So therefore what we've got is that e to the power y must equal x plus the root of x squared plus 1. And if I take the natural log to both sides then what we've got here is therefore y would equal the natural log of all of x plus the root of x squared plus 1. And since y equals the inverse shine of x, we've therefore got that the inverse shine of x must be equal to the natural log of x plus the square root then of x squared plus 1. And this is something that I would encourage you then to learn. So we'll just border that, okay? And uh, we'll be using this in later questions. Now, from this, we could plot the graph of y equals the inverse shine of x just by simply taking values of x. And if we had, for instance, the inverse shine of 2, you're going to have then the natural log of 2 plus the root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus another one, which is 5. And so that's the exact value. If you work this out as a decimal on your calculator, you'd find you get 1.44 and so on. You could do this for negative values, say. So, for instance, if you're asked to find the inverse shine, say, of minus 3, then this would be equal to the natural log of minus 3 plus, and then minus 3 all squared would be 9, plus another one is 10. So you're going to have root 10. And if you were to work this out on your calculator, you'd find you get minus 1.81 and so on. And so by putting various values of x through this function here, you should be familiar with the graph that you can plot. y equals the inverse shine of x. Looks like this. OK, so I hope it's given you some idea then how we can express the inverse shine of x in terms of natural logs.